So over my time working with startups, startup founders, entrepreneurs, and things like that, I have looked at an absolute an absolute ton of pitch decks. So first, just in case you're not sure what that term means, we refer to a pitch deck, which is the presentation that you give to a potential investor in your startup. It's a pitch deck because you're pitching them for an investment in your idea. And a typical pitch deck is anywhere between 10 and 15 slides where you work through the problem you're trying to solve, your solution, your team, your projections, or how much money you think you're gonna make or lose, uh, all kinds of factors. And at the end, you have an ask for the investor where you're asking them to invest in your business model and you're telling them in exchange for that ask what you're willing to give them, whether it's a convertible note and you're going to give them debt payments down the road or shares in your company and they're going to have equity and they'll make their return through uh, an exit of some sort or sale to someone. So that's, that's a quick idea of what a pitch deck is. And I have seen a lot of pitch decks. I've been fortunate enough to see those for the startups that I work with that are trying to raise funding through investors. And I guide them through developing that pitch deck, making it more presentable, practicing their pitch and how they're going to pitch it to investors uh, all the way through sitting in on pitch competitions where 10 or 15 startups get the opportunity to pitch to a crowd and the best pitch or the best idea wins 10, 15, 25, sometimes $100,000 to go toward legal expenses and sort of hitting milestones for their business. So I've seen an absolute ton of pitch decks and I've worked on some pitch decks. Some of the ones I've worked on have ended up being uh, award winning, meaning they've been named best to show at a pitch competition or something like that. So I, I know quite a bit about how these pitch decks should look and what should be in them. And so today I want to share with you what about a pitch deck would make it stand out. Because the truth is that an investor is looking at so many pitches on a given day. I mean, we're talking about hundreds in a given month, if not more, uh, that they're potentially looking at, uh, especially if they uh, haven't been vetted by an analyst or something like that these investors are looking at so many that it's a lot like a resume when you're applying for a job, you need your pitch deck to stand out. So I want to share with you a couple of ways that you can do that so that your pitch deck really stands out. And the first one I want to share with you is the idea of having a relatable story. A pitch deck is collateral that is trying to sell something uh, related to your business, your startup, right? And so you need to think of it like any marketing or advertising collateral that you would have is that that collateral needs to tell a story of why someone should pay attention to what you're saying. And your pitch deck is exactly the same way. Uh, you want that pitch deck to tell the story of your startup. Now, hopefully when an investor is listening to you tell that story, they're agreeing with that story. They're agreeing with the pain point that you are saying the industry is experiencing. And they're agreeing with the way you would go about solving that pain point. Now, they don't have to entirely agree, but you want them to feel that story in their core and recognize that it's a real, real pain point and they feel like what you are presenting would really solve that for people. Now, the thing about telling the story is we oftentimes in a pitch deck will use imagery or images, pictures, to tell that story because you don't want to have too much text on a pitch deck slide. If you do, your investor is reading it and they're not listening to what I call your voiceover, your voice, the, the speech part of a presentation. So imagery is good, but one of the things I want to caution you against when you're telling the story in your pitch deck is not to use too much fancy graphics, too many fancy graphics, too much fancy smart art on a PowerPoint. Don't, don't go overboard. Matter of fact, some of the best pitch decks examples that I have seen, and I'll link to some of those, uh, a link to some of those on a website I found recently below in the notes, but some of the best, best uh, pitch decks I have seen have been very basic. They, they've been light imagery and a, and a bit of text. They haven't gone crazy and done a bunch of stuff that, frankly, if, you know, Murphy's Law, if something will happen, it will happen. If you use too many fancy things and too many transitions of slides, a lot of times the technology will fail and you're sitting there trying to present a pitch deck that, that really uh, isn't working appropriately. Uh, I've seen that too many times where people maybe include a link to a video and they say, let me show you this video for a second and, and the link doesn't work and then they're messing around with Wi-Fi. So don't get too fancy when you're trying to tell your story. Basic imagery is good. Using the right text or the right words sparsely, being concise with what you're trying to say is more important than being 
crazy fancy in those things. So the first thing I want you to do is when you build that pitch deck, ask yourself, is it telling a story? Does each slide lead you to the next chapter of the story, the next chapter, the next chapter, the next chapter, till you get to the ending and you have that big ask. At that point, if you've told the story appropriately, the investor's really bought into what you're doing. And as long as everything else makes sense, especially this next suggestion, the projections, then they'll be ready. So suggestion number two for what makes a pitch deck stand out are projections that make sense. Now, I am a financial, what we might call a financial mind. I come from a financial background. Numbers are my thing. They excite me. I like looking at them. I like analyzing. But let's face it, a lot of people don't. They're not financially uh, trained and they don't have the expertise, and that's okay, the world takes different types. Um, but for folks who are presenting to investors or people who would be interested in what you're doing, your projections absolutely, absolutely need to make sense. You need to have them based on uh, some sort of research, so you're just not making a wild guess about what you think your revenue is going to be, and you know, we're going to get 1% of the market, which is a standard thing I hear that drives me crazy. That just shows you're taking an easy way out, and picking an easy number instead of researching what, excuse me, <coughs> researching what part of the market you really can carve off. So I want you to do projections that make sense. Here's a good example. If your projections show that you're going to make $100,000 the first year and 10 million the second year and 100 million the third year, that's not really believable. Now, I know what a lot of founders are doing is they're trying to show that they're, they're going to scale and they're going to scale quickly and that should entice the investors. But really, when you are sort of that aggressive with your projections, it's just too easy for an investor to blow you off and say, that's not realistic. That's not going to happen. So you, you need to have projections that make sense. Now, the other thing about projections that have to make sense is they have to show an investor how they're going to get a return on their money. So here's what I mean by that. Now, if you're showing losses for the next 10 years, uh, some investors may just bow out. They may expect a return after three years or five years because if it's taken that long, their money is going to be tied up with your business too long. And so then that doesn't make sense because they can't get the return that they want. So second suggestion uh, for a pitch deck that's really going to stand out is work hard on building some financial projections that make sense. If you are not of the financial mind, there's nothing wrong with getting someone on your team that is really good at that type stuff or even an outside consultant to take a look at your projections and help you sharpen the pencil on those. It'll make a big difference in your presentation. The third thing I want you to think about when it comes to making the pitch deck stand out is the ask. Okay, so that final slide where you say, I'd like $100,000 in seed money in exchange for 10% of equity in my company. Now, if you've watched Shark Tank on, uh, used to be on ABC, I think it's on CNBC now, if you, use, if you watched Shark Tank, you'll see this all the time. You'll see the startup founder comes in and they give a quick spiel about their company and then they say, all right, and I want $100,000 for 1% of my company. Okay, now what you're saying there is that your company is worth $10 million. And the next thing that happens is the shark says, okay, what were your sales last year? What are your sales this year? And the founder will say, well, this is the first year we've had any sales and we made $23,000. Now, Guys, I know I might be exaggerating a little bit, but to be honest, I'm not off that much. I've seen it multiple times in person at pitch competitions, and I've even seen it on sh public shows like Shark Tank where the ask is just ridiculous. If you don't have a lot of revenue, your company's not likely worth $10 million. I don't care how good your idea is. You need a realistic ask. And the best way to do that is to, is to base that on a couple of things. There's a couple of ways that you can get an ask that makes sense. Now, if you don't, if you're what's called pre-revenue and you don't have any revenue, then you can't use the first method, which is to value future revenues of your business. You can't use that. If you're pre-revenue, a lot of times you'll have to base that on milestones that you have accomplished, right? So uh, you have an issued patent, not a pending, but you have an issued patent. You have your first users, say 10,000 users. Uh, Instagram is a famous example of that. Instagram was acquired by Facebook. I think it was for a billion dollars. They had no, hardly any revenue whatsoever. What Facebook was buying was the idea, the value of the idea, and the value of the user base that was already on Instagram. So they were acquiring more users, and they just figured that was a, an acquisition cost for them. So the third thing you want in a pitch deck that's going to stand out is an ask that makes sense. It is much better to own 1% uh, of the entire McDonald's franchisee corporation, the big corporation that has all these franchisees across the world. You want 1% ownership in that much more than you want 100% ownership 
in your hot dog stand. Now I've said that uh, example for a long time. What I'm really trying to say is be willing to give up some equity, have a reasonable ask to your investors, because without the capital they're going to provide you, you may not scale enough to really get to any sort of value of your company. I know it's your baby. I know it means a lot to you, but be willing to let go of that equity, have a reasonable ask, have projections that make sense and really tell the story of your startup, of your business. And that will help attract investors and help you have a pitch deck that stands out. Until next time, I hope you find your voice and find funding. Take care.